Hello and welcome to tutorial of Eclipse HONO, NMAS and Eclipse J. HONO is a project about IoT connectivity and NMAS provides a scalable message layer for the cloud. Eclipse J is a web-based IDE and allows you to do cloud-first development. As cloud platform we will be using OpenShift uh, in a local single node setup using Minishift and all of the instructions for this tutorial are also available on GitHub and I will add a link to the uh, comment section of this video. So you should be able to replicate these with your own setup. If you run into any problems let me know by opening an issue on the GitHub repository and I will have a look into it. I will be performing the tutorial on a freshly installed RHEL machine but it should work the same way on other Linux distributions, macOS or even Windows if you adapt the commands here and there a bit. The first thing uh, you will need to do is to get Minishift and the OC binary installed. Minishift requires Docker machine, but there are lots of information out there on how to do this, so I will skip this in the tutorial. And let's go! The first step is to create a new Minishift instance. If you already have one, I recommend to back it up, destroy it and create a new one. The important thing is to have at least 4 CPUs assigned, 40GB of disk and 16GB of RAM. I know that I changed this to 12 GB of RAM for the recording, since the machine I'm using only has 16 GB total. But I ensured before that the tutorial will run through. However, if you want to play around with the instance in the end, 16 GB is a better choice. Important are the four CPUs though. OpenShift will limit the number of parts you can create based on the number of CPUs available. And we need more parts than the default settings with the two CPUs would allow. After the instance was created, you can log on using the default credentials from the console. You will see the software catalog, which allows you to quick start your new project. But we will ignore that for now and follow our own tutorial. We also delete the default My Project in order to have a clean space. Deleting a project is rather simple and will destroy all resources inside of it. So, should you encounter any troubles when performing the installation yourself, you can always delete the project in question and start from scratch. Now we will clone the repository containing the tutorial using Git. There's a develop branch and a master branch. Right now everything is still in the develop branch. I hope to change that soon so that the extra reference to the develop branch is no longer needed. Then we create a new project and download and deploy NMAS. We do this using the command line tools instead of the web UI. Deploying NMAS will trigger the download of a set of container images and will take some time. But we can track the progress using the web UI. So let's navigate to the NMAS project and see what's going on. Right now there are two deployments, but those are only the first two bootstrapping the NMAS installation. After those are up and running, it will create additional services and deployments with that. We do need to wait until everything is deployed before continuing and I will fast forward a bit.
Now we can see that everything is deployed. Looking at the web UI of Enmas, however, it shows an empty installation. So the next step is to create the addresses for the default tenant of the Hono installation, which we will start in a minute. Creating the addresses also will take some time, because with the first addresses, Enmas will also create a new broker deployment. In this scenario, the broker is completely managed by Enmas and we don't need to take care about any of the configuration for it. After the configuration is applied, we can continue with the installation of Hono. So again, we create a new project from the command line and then process an installation template. This will start the deployment of Hono using OpenShift source to image. What it does is that it creates a new build inside of OpenShift in order to create its container images before it's actually deploying them. So it downloads the source of Hono from Git and executes a Maven build. The reason to do that is simply to ensure that the base image of the containers are as fresh as they can be. It is quite easy to rebuild source to image builds once a new base image is available. Again, you can watch the progress of the builds and the deployments from the web UI. Once a build is complete, it will automatically trigger a new deployment and start or update anything which depends on it. Time has come to deploy the IoT simulator. It follows the same way as the installation of Hono. Create a new project, process the template and wait until everything is built and deployed. After the IoT simulator is deployed, it will automatically start to simulate a single device, publishing one message per second from a recorded set of data. The data is some energy consumption, and you may find more information about that in the repository. The data is being sent to Hono via MQTT. Hono does the processing and will forward the data to Enmas using MQP 1.0 so that consumers may consume it from there. The IoT simulator will also consume the data from Enmas using MQP 1.0 and will store the payload in an InfluxDB. We use the same InfluxDB which Hono uses for internal metrics simply because it is already there. As a next step, we will install an instance of Grafana. Again, create a new project, process the template and wait for the build to finish.
After the deployment is complete, we deploy two data sources and dashboards to the instance using the API from the command line. When we log into the web UI of Grafana now, we can see two dashboards. One will show the simulated IoT payload and the other will show most recent internal metrics of HONO. Now we are at a point where HONO, NMAS and the IoT simulator is installed and running. Data is being simulated, streamed through the messaging layer and stored again in a time series database, all in a containerized cloud environment. We can view the data using the Grafana dashboards, which is fun, but let's deploy some kind of custom application to the setup, which makes use of that data. In order to be able to develop in the same cloud environment, we host our IoT solution. We will be deploying Eclipse J alongside HONO. Installing J is also simply executing a few commands from the command line and a bit of waiting until everything is deployed. When Che is running, you need to open a specific URL in Che with your web browser, telling Che to bootstrap a new workspace with an existing configuration. The project is a simple Node.js application using TypeScript. J will check out the sources from Git and do an initial call to NPM in order to materialize all the dependencies of the project. After everything is done, we can click the Run button and start the actual application. This will start a Node.js application in the cloud container and export the service so that we can access it from our web browser. What we see is the application running in the GE IDE container. And now we can also start making changes to the application, like you would do it with your local IDE, just in the cloud. I will add a new HTML element for showing the device ID. And simply by making the changes and saving the file, the change gets applied and can be seen when I reload the browser tab.
Of course, at some point you want to run your application outside the IDE. For this, we will create a new project in OpenShift and now we're going to use one of the pre-configured applications from the catalog. Simply by creating a new application from the command line, pointing it to the Git repository, it will figure out that this is a Node.js project and will select the correct runtime environment for it. Again, a build is created and triggered and at some point the application will be up and running. The last step is to expose the service, as by default the service is not accessible from the outside. You can see the same application running now. Of course, the modifications made to the UI are not available here, since we never committed and pushed those changes to the Git repository. So this concludes the tutorial. I really hope that you liked it and that it gives you a little bit of insight of what can be done with Hono and MastG and OpenShift. Of course, this only scratched the surface and I can only encourage you to try it out yourself. Thanks for watching!